Well, good morning, Sandy. How are you doing? Amy, I am great. I've been having fun. You're back. I was following all your fun at NAPO. So uh, you were updating me a little bit too. President of NAPO here, one of our co-hosts and what a great group. It was a great group. You know, it was crazy um, being in person. Like, and I will tell you, I signed off. I pretty much signed off of everything for the week because I was just so busy with everything. And um, so it was kind of fun coming in on Monday, Tuesday, I guess, Tuesday, I got back into social media and I saw everybody's posts. So I was like, oh, look at all the fun pictures. And it was just kind of fun to see uh, getting all these productivity and organizing people together. And, um, you know, but I'm just going to tell you there's pros and cons. Um, because there, there was COVID COVID happened, you know, we did all the stuff that we could to prevent and required testing and all that. And it still happened. It still happened. And we're, so you would have had two years off then, correct? Would 2019 have been the last time? Yeah. Yeah. So that was 2019. That was the year I was there then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That was your year. Yeah. So Fort Worth. Which, which is, makes a lot of sense too, because I had fun and for everyone's listeners background, I presented, uh, I was spoke to the leadership group <clears throat> and then worked with the board a little bit too. So I got to know all these wonderful people and great organization. And so I had fun watching yeah. along because I recognized so many faces and they were all congregated together. And I, I thought, wow, you know, now that I think about it, it's like, that's probably the first time I saw everybody together and it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time we've been back. So yeah, maybe I'll have you come for 2023. <laughs> we'll so, see. It's uh, going to be in Vegas if you want to join us. Oh, hey, that's, <laughs> I hey, know. I drive there all the time. And I know. We'll, we'll have to plan this. So I, I kept thinking about you with our last topic of foresight and being the president of such a big organization, because it's a huge organization. And I know you had talked about how you have someone that's a foresight expert, but as president, you have to use foresight all the time. Yeah. So it was funny because she was there. Our expert was there and she gave me all this foresight stuff. I'm like, guess what? I was talking about foresight. She was very proud of me. And then she started giving me all sorts of information. I just pulled it out. Like, oh, look at all this. And she said something profound to me that, or something that kind of was this foresight, Amy, to um, identify the, a, uh, a planned future state. So you're kind of planning what you want for the future state to be. Mm-hmm. But then She's like, because then you can make steps now to start moving you towards that future state. And it takes into all these, um, wow, these changes. So, but you're, you're identifying the future state. So anyway, it was just, okay. Very exciting. So we're going from that to toxic positivity, toxic positivity. (laughs) This was a new statement. This was a new phrase for me, Sandy, when you presented it, I was like, oh, I haven't heard this, uh, put this way, but on the research, I get it. So do you want to explain what you brought forward? Well, I'm going to use my, um, there's a lot of great information out there on it. I was actually at the airport reading through one of my feeds and somewhere, I don't know if it was LinkedIn, Instagram, a video came up of uh, an expert talking about toxic positivity and it got my attention because I'm a positive person and I pride myself on positivity. And it was really that phrase, toxic positivity. I'm thinking, what could, how could positivity ever be toxic? Well, obviously it's an issue for me because (laughs) after reading through it, it's like, oh, check that box. Oh, check that box. You know, positivity doesn't always win. And so really the gist of it is as I watched the quick video and then I shared it with you, Amy, and said, wow, this would be quite the topic because you're a very positive person as well. And it's really about um, toxic positivity is thinking that positivity solves everything when it doesn't and really bringing in your 
you, me as a person bringing in positivity to create, to, to take over somebody else's feelings. And it's a positivity that doesn't help get to the right end. And sometimes it's not going to be a good end, but positivity does not save all. And it actually, by, by projecting that on someone and saying, I'm a positive, it's, it's going to have a positive solution. I'm here just to bring out the good. And, and what's the worst case scenario and all those other things that we say, it could be worse um, that you're actually making it worse because you're being toxic and not really understanding the other person's feelings. And in a lot of ways, toxic positivity <clears throat> is protecting our own because we don't want the negative and we don't want to deal with it. So it's, it's toxic to the person because you're truly not hearing them or being supportive in what they need. And it's toxic in ourselves because we're trying to avoid a hard topic or really empath. It's really not showing the true empathy for their feelings. So yeah. that's kind of my, uh, <clears throat> was my read on it. It was in researching it further, it's just like bingo, bingo, bingo. <clears throat> Probably the best example and easiest example is when somebody dies because everybody thinks through, and I'm going to go with everybody before they meet their friend, their relative at the funeral home or where for the first time, what am I going to say? Right. Right. And there's, we all know there's those whole list of things you shouldn't be saying <clears throat> but we tend to want to say the you know, examples of if they <clears throat> lost a child, well, you can have more. Well, that's not positivity. That's toxic positivity. Or it's good that you had him for so many years. The, those positive points that you bring out, first of all, you don't engage in asking them the question of what they need or taking time to reflect on what your part is in the conversation. It's saying things that you think they want to hear that usually isn't what they want to hear. Right. It's not acknowledging the pain they're going through. Right. Like it's you selfish, just, you're, actually, you're kind of dismissing this pain, any kind of pain, and you're throwing out a positive spin on something. And, um, I was reading something feelings are for feeling. And if you're trying to move people past their feelings or you're trying to move yourself past your feelings, then that's toxic positivity because you, there's a reason you have these feelings and you have to go through it to get to the other side and not avoid it and not dismiss other people's feeling this way. One of the things I read, I think you're spot on on everything you talked about. I was like, yes, 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 yes. I get it. Like I, I was checking the boxes too. When I was reading, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I've done that before. I think I've said that before and trying to like make someone feel better. I'm not acknowledging what they're actually feeling. And, um, this one thing about doing it to yourself though, is this quote here. Um, I am very, very happy but I want to be very, very happy. And that is why I'm miserable. <laughs> I love it. I know. It's like, yeah, we have these unrealistic expectations too on what we should be feeling and where should we should be. And inwardly, you know, back to my mother calls me Pollyanna. I'm better about that now, but back in the day when I was going through, she said, you're Pollyanna. And not everything is good. Life isn't good. Not all people are good. And even though there are positives to seeing the best in things, you're not doing yourself any favors. And at the time I thought, well, I was so proud of being a Pollyanna. Sandy Oyce has a good attitude and Sandy Oyce rallies. And it was my mom who said, you know, right now it's not serving you very well. And you're, I was actually projecting that on my kids. I think we talked about this on an earlier episode that she said, it's good for them to see you in pain. And it's good for them to know that this was not easy for you because life isn't easy. So you're projecting off toxic positivity really to the kids and saying, everything's positive. If you just look at it that way. And you know what, being miserable is part of being happy because you got to work your way through it. Yeah. My little quote today, Amy, look at it's serendipity. Now I'm on uh -huh. a quote sheet. Look at, I got my highlights going already. It says a truly happy person is one who can enjoy the scenery while on a detour. Okay. But 
the detour doesn't have to, it, it, it's not always going to be positive. So there's a fine line between still trying to work your way through it. You're in the, the, the detour, but it's acknowledging you're in the detour too. Right. And I appreciate how your mom said you're not doing any favors for your children, because I do think that is something that we do to our children unintentionally. We think we're, we're raising them in a positive environment, but then when they are, um, when they feel sad or they feel angry or upset, there's this pressure on them to make it all be positive and look positive. And so they don't quite understand how to deal with those feelings. And I, I do think that's why there's some anxiety around, um, you know, people feeling different things and not knowing how to handle it because they've, you know, th- th- we've been around positive people <laughs> who, who haven't taught us how to deal with our emotions. And you just get over it, right? You just get over it. And I've learned, I become a much better mentor to my adult children. I'd say specifically my youngest son who kind of hits a different generation by instead of jumping to initially giving him advice or telling him the high side, you know, that's, that's my knee jerk reaction. Instead to say, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. What can I do to help? How do you feel? What, what do you need me for? And that was one thing I read in one of these articles too. find out what the expectation is. If it's a, a, a two-way conversation means you both have needs in that conversation and find a way of understanding what they need, because sometimes people just need to let it all out. You know, if they just want to be heard and explain their feelings, but they really don't want advice right now, find out what they need in the conversation first. And that doesn't mean saying, what do you need? But it might start with saying, I'm sorry you feel that way. And what can I do for you? Yeah. Yeah. I just need you to listen. Or can I just tell you what I'm thinking? It might not be right, but then ask for advice. Because I think yesterday I was talking to Grant and I said, well, you know, I'm just trying to give my advice. He said, mom, I appreciate that. And I always want to hear what you have to say, but I'm actually not asking for advice right now. And it's like, okay, it was a good point. I didn't take it personally. He wasn't, he was kind of talking out loud. He was talking it through in his mind and he didn't want to get to the advice part. He wanted to work it through in his mind first. Right. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him to stand up and say that too. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to put it in front of, I'm just working it through. So I was looking at some things, um, some forms of toxic positivity and what happens. And so one of the things that happens is, um, if we tell someone just stay positive or look on the bright side, which you had mentioned, which dismisses what they're feeling and it shuts down the conversation. It's kind of like saying, just be quiet and move on. Like, I don't want to, you got your feelings aren't when you say that. Right. Yeah. Line in the sand. You're just feeling like, shut down, look on the bright side, quit talking about what you're feeling, which is a, um, a, I don't think that's the way it's intended, but that's what happens. Right. Well, exactly. And then this one, after a loss, you mentioned this, everything happens for a reason. And we're avoiding someone else's pain. Like we just, we're kind of shutting them down and avoiding their pain. And then the other one is um, happiness is a choice, which I thought this was an interesting one of, you know, someone tells you that they're upset about something and you say, well, you know, happiness is a choice. If you're not happy, you're choosing not to be happy, which I don't think I've ever told somebody that, but it's it's saying that it's your fault that you're not happy because you're making that choice. That would only work with the happiness factor if there was no uncontrollable circumstances. It's all within your control, but life isn't within your control. The uncontrollable does not make that a choice. And some people back to, you know, we talked about, you know, happiness, people have different baselines. And I think part of accepting other people and being authentic and authentic to them is to know some people are not 
do not have positivity in their top five and they don't go to that and that's okay. Their baseline is different, but it's accepting people that whether we choose to be positive, I think it's a good lesson to read about toxic positivity and say that's not always a positive thing. I go back to, I thought a lot about our discussion about back when Meghan Markle, she had talked about the reporter that noticed her body language and said, are you okay? And I loved that because it's back to asking a question. It's, it, it checks all the boxes of <clears throat> not having toxic positivity or being dismissive, but asking that simple question, are you okay? How do you feel? What can I do for you? And that, that, that is, that's a great way to start the conversation rather than interjecting a positivity comment on how they should be feeling. Right. And looking like you think about Meghan Markle, there's so many things that you could identify of reasons she should be completely happy. Like you could dismiss every little, the little things that are that you might consider small that could be bothering her and making her unhappy. You might look at this image of her and say, why isn't she happy? She's got this, she's got this, she's got this, she's got all this stuff. You know, she should be happy instead of asking, are you okay? You know, there's a lot of toxic positivity that's uh, secondhand, meaning how often do you hear people say, they've got all the money in the world. They've got all these things right. and making these judgments right. that what do they have to complain about? That's kind of back to that happiness is a choice. And I, yeah. I think I've talked about this before about, um, I, I just, I think about it. It comes up when the back, but just thinking through what life is really like versus how it looks is I had said I had a bad day or I posted something on Facebook with a picture of a cup of coffee and a, I went and bought a dress. I said, that makes everything feel better. And a comment was made, you've got life by the balls. What do you have to complain about? And at the time, my life was actually crumbling. And yeah. it was a, that was definitely a toxic positivity because it was kind of a secondhand positivity. I don't think he meant it bad, but back to that, imp the impression was, what could I possibly have to complain about because I had the things that people thought, you know, back to what money status, I had it all. So what did I have to complain about? And yeah, that that's kind of the poster child of toxic positivity, isn't it? Because it is very right. a toxic comment and just assuming that people by the looks of things, everything is great. What do they have to complain about? Um, falls in that category of happy, happiness is a choice, doesn't it? Right. Yes, it does. All right. So there's, um, and I'm linking to this article I found because it has some really good insight, but why it's harmful. It's shaming people when you're telling them their emotions aren't valid. It causes guilt. Um, it avoids authentic human emotion. And this one we haven't talked about yet. We've talked about those other three, but this one, it prevents growth. It allows us to avoid feeling things that might be painful. And so it, it, we never get the deeper insight because we're just going to the positive and brushing it over and burying it. And it doesn't help us grow. And, you know, with that one, <clears throat> I personally, <clears throat> that's the one where I can feel I feel better as a person, more growth when I reflect. So as an example, when things aren't going right for me, my knee-jerk reaction is to go to my core values, right? I do things that find adventure, find fun, reach out to family. Those things, the things that are my, th those things that are my top values that make me feel good and bring me easy satisfaction or kind of my go-to, that's the easy way in avoidance when things aren't going right. So I kind of get that quick rush. I you know, went out on an adventure. I started a text chain with a bunch of friends and that gives me that rush of feeling better, but I've gotten so much better probably after my mom's Pollyanna comment to always go back and say, okay, what, what was the trigger? You know, what made me feel unhappy? You know, the, the resolution was fine because I felt pretty darn happy and I was in a good mood after I took these steps, but what got me there to begin with? 
And I really forced myself to unravel whether it was a trigger, what it was, you know, what really brought, you know, the happiness factor down rather than just take my positivity and drown what was wrong. So that point that you just made about growth, that's huge for me for growth. When I unwind it and say, that was the trigger, or that was the, that was the, the, the product of my unhappiness was because of uh, maybe how I acted. I was being bitchy. You know, I was, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't happy with myself. So how am I going to change that? Right. Um, yeah. So then this was one where I could check the box and say, I'm doing much better with pos uh, toxic positivity because the reflection part is not always natural to me because I'd rather just move on. That's part of positivity is just take the high road, keep on going, right? Work your way through it and not go back and say, okay, how do I make sure that doesn't happen again? Or is it a valid trigger? Am I overthinking things? You know, there's a lot of deepness to what the problem is and acknowledging that will help get through it in a better way the next time. Yeah. I like that you started looking at happiness factor because I was wondering if reading about toxic positivity and learning about it affected the way you looked at the happiness factor, mm -hmm. because I don't. I don't think it's in conflict at all, but I, um, I think it actually supports it of identifying, going back to your core values and making sure you're honoring your core values. And that if you're feeling this lack of, um, happiness or that you are, you're going back to that and not just, um, going back to, well, I just need to be happy. <laughs> happiness yeah, is the there was one article. Um, I had three articles that were probably my favorites. We'll have to compare notes and if they're the same one. They talked about the lady who, um, I'll have to find it here. <clears throat> I've got them pulled up, but she teaches a happiness class. And I believe it was at Harvard. And she talked about <clears throat> happiness, basically how happiness is not a choice, but how much impact relationship and other people have on your happiness because it's just, it's part of life. We don't live in an insulated bubble, which really related and connected with me as it relates to the happiness factor, because a big part of that is the outward value of, you know, feeling valued by other people and also valuing others and how that's a core. If you don't have that part, it, it, you know, it's like a circular function and how she, she's, communicated it a different way, but how the key to relationships. And so part of reflection isn't just what I've done, but the impact of my relationships. And it's not a yes or no, get rid of the relationship, keep the relationship. It's about also more importantly, bettering the relationship and, and understanding how is there a communication breakdown? Do I need to share something with them? Is, is it, why is it making me feel bad? You know, all those types of things. And the, that's the heavy lifting because it's not just me saying happiness is a choice and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have a wonderful day. And then all of a sudden my neighbor turns me into the HOA, right? And <laughs> example, not that it ever happened. I'm just saying an example because she's walking by. So I had to pick on her. Um, I'll find that. Of course, I can't find it right now. Um, they went back and talked about, yeah, they, and I thought it was interesting that they have a whole class on this as well, but I yeah. think that's a great thing. Yeah. It's a, I think people are, uh, everybody's searching for happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, everybody it's out there. And I think, I think this positivity is um, something that is crushing people. And this is one of the things, this is a part of this article is how to avoid toxic positive positivity. And it gives you some tips. One of them is to manage your negative emotions. Don't deny okay. them. Okay. Which we've talked a little bit about that. Be realistic about what you should feel. Because again, you know, if we think that we're constantly supposed to be happy, we're stressing ourselves out if we're not right. 
Then I liked this one. It's okay to feel more than one thing. So you can feel happiness, but you can also feel sadness. Like you can, you can have overlying or overlapping emotions. It's not all about just having one emotion all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very good. I know. I just think about, um, you know, people always say I have mixed emotions. That's perfect. We should all have mixed emotions about things because if we don't, then we're only looking at it from one angle. And right. so really we should have mixed emotions about every single thing. Right. Right. So she, so I found my little, uh, quote. So Kirkland teaches happiness psychology class for undergraduates. She's learned from experience that true positivity is more than internal emotions. Okay. Again, just what you're saying, it's also affected by a relationship with ourselves. So relationship with ourselves, with others, as well as our relationship to the community and the world around us. So there's so many things going on. You know, something in the news is bothering you. It, you're going to, how it affects you, it's mixed emotions. It's yourself. It's the people close to yeah. you. It's, it's all those things, you know, it, it, accepting the complications of humanity just as important as accepting the complications with our own internal selves. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that she teaches a class on that. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about some toxic statements. Okay. Here's one. Just stay positive. Yep. Toxic. Okay. Good vibes only. <laughs> I see that bumper sticker all the time. Good vibes only. Yeah. There's bad vibes out there too. Mm -hmm. It could be worse. It could be worse. Oh, I'm the queen of that one. I know it could be worse, which is often a true statement. <laughs> but which is, still, we also talked about how that could be a positive thing to keep you going, but keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. I don't yourself know if that's ever going to be a good thing to say to somebody else. Yeah, it could be worse. Yeah, that's just dismissing what's happening right now. Um, things happen for a reason. Oh, that's like, oh, well, they're in a better place now. Oh, well, that doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> They're not here. You know, um, failure isn't an option. Like failure is the best option. I, it was just funny. I just read something and it, this just hit me, um, about why is the end of something always a failure? Um, if you close your business, you have a failed business. If you get a divorce, it's a failed marriage. If you like failure, isn't like time does not mean success, right? right? Because that's saying, that's saying if you stayed in this for longer, it would have been a success where may have, maybe it was a failure way before it came to an end. You know, it was just an interesting little pivot on the way we phrase things the way we phrase things and look at things <gasps> you know you're yeah. leaving that job or you know i, know. I always say yeah. being fired it's like uh, everybody probably has been fired from something but it's right. such a you know bad word it's the f word and it's like it's just a new chapter that's it i always try to say look at things in chapters and yeah. When somebody is complaining to me about their ex, it's like, you know what, end of the chapter onto the new, but that doesn't mean that chapter disappears either. It's part of you. And, it, and so many and people like it a failure. It. Yeah. It's not a failure. Or it's if it's a failure, you know, my failures are sometimes my best successes. Yeah. Because it right. changes me, it's growth. And we talked about this with this agile where things are circular. Like we are evolving, we're moving forward and it, we shouldn't ever get to a point where at the end it's a failure. It's like we've evolved and it's at the point where it needs to be at the time it is like, and is that being pot? Is that being a Pollyanna? <laughs> you have been Pollyanna in you too, but I appreciate that about you. You know, it's not all a bad thing. That's a full circle moment. Full circle <laughs> hopefully, moment. Hopefully that's not to toxic positivity happening there. 
<laughs> All right, so let's talk about some non-toxic alternatives, things you can say. So you can say, I'm listening. You mentioned that one. I'm here no matter what. I love that one. I always tell my kids that whenever they're trying to make a decision, you know, I'm, I'm here with you no matter what you decide. Mm -hmm. So that it's just gives them freedom. Right. I love that one. I'm here no matter what. This must be really hard. That's a good one. I like what, what do you need from, what can I do? What do you need from me? What do you need from me? Sometimes bad things happen. How can I help? Same thing. Failure is sometimes part of life. Yeah. Your feelings are valid. I think that or you feel that way. I'm sorry that you're feeling like that. I mean, I, that's what I do try to say, because it's true. It's like, oh, I hate it. Cause that's why I go to toxic positivity is I feel bad that they feel that way. So I want them to feel better. Yeah. I love this. Your feelings are valid. I mean, that right there, just no matter what someone is feeling, what they're feeling is feeling. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Just acknowledging them. Mm -hmm. They, they may be skewed with their perspective and stuff like that, but it's still, they're still valid. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Sandy, this was lovely. Interesting. We're going to put some show notes, some links in the show notes about toxic positivity. I think this is a good check for you and I, especially about, you know, making sure we are listening and not just spinning everything positive. And I remember one time my mom, my mom is a pretty positive person. Mm -hmm. And my brother was saying, you know, sometimes things are just crap, mom. And my mom looked at me and she's like, what do you think, Amy? Do you think things is, are there things that are just crap? And I was like, I was trying to think because I am Miss Pollyanna. And then I finally said, I go, yeah, there are things that are crap. I don't like changing the cat litter. That's crap to me. Like, I don't want to do it. And she started laughing. So it's kind of this, um. Sometimes things are crap. <laughs> Sometimes things are crap. Yeah. It's a perfect way to end it. I know. Sometimes there you go. Things are crap. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it's crap out there. All right. Thanks, you. All right, and until next I will, week. Uh, yes, until next week. Thanks, Sandy. Bye bye.